waited all week for this matchup. Number six versus number nine in the country as Ohio State heads on the road to Notre Dame Stadium to take on the Irish. And if you could paint a perfect picture of what college football should look like, it might look like Christmas, but it feels like prime time right now. And we are absolutely over the moon to be bringing you this matchup between the Irish and the Buckeyes. No Eagle, Todd Blackledge, Catherine Tapp, and Ahmed Farid, and Terry McCauley with you, and Notre Dame in their green uniforms with a sea of green around them already for what should be a fantastic showdown. Yeah, and for Notre Dame, they've got to handle the energy, the emotion of this game, and the speed of Ohio State and their early force. Ohio State coming into this one. Both teams undefeated. Both teams looking to prove to themselves and to the rest of the country, let alone their fan bases, that they belong in that national championship conversation. And with Sam Hartman leading the way and Marcus Freeman in year two, Notre Dame is ready. And here come the Irish. Ohio State to a crowd of boos. 3 0 on the season. Looking to showcase what they've got this year. I like what Ryan Day said to us. You know, our guys have a lot of big games to reference. This is a, a big game, and they're used to it. It's a rematch of the season opener last year as we go down to Catherine Tappen. Coach, you said you want your team to be aggressive and attack. What does that look like on the field tonight? We talk about seizing this opportunity. The minute the foot hits the ball, I don't care if it's kickoff or kickoff return, we got to go. And uh, I don't want them to play to not make a mistake, man. Be fearless, and uh, let's go attack. Ohio State has an inexperienced quarterback in Kyle McCord, but the top receiving threat in the country in Marvin Harrison Jr. How do you slow him down? You know what, we, we got to continue to do the things we've done well, right, and switch it up. Um, he's a good quarterback, and they got some really talented receivers. Uh, but I'm excited uh, to see this defense go out there and play um, and really seize this special opportunity that we have. Coach, thanks so much. All right, thank you. Marcus Freeman started his regular season head coaching career last year with a loss at Ohio State, his alma mater. Now he's got a chance for revenge, and the stars are out. Prime time Saturday night here at Notre Dame Stadium. Number six versus number nine is next on NBC. It is a perfect night for football here in South Bend. Notre Dame won the toss. They elect to defer to the second half. That means Spencer Schrader is going to kick it off, and Xavier Johnson, the grad captain, will receive it. And it will be a touchback to start us out, which means Kyle McCord, the new starting quarterback who was named the official starter before the week three game a week ago against Western Kentucky, where he put up a season high 318 yards and three touchdowns. This is his first big test on the road here at Notre Dame. Yeah, they opened the season at Indiana, but this is a much better team, a much more hostile environment. He's going to have to control his nerves control the huddle the line of scrimmage the communication but the good news is he took a big step forward last week in the way he played against western kentucky and the better news is he's got some of the best skill position players in the country including travion henderson the running back here on first down play action this is what they do well swing it to a buka and no running room. He gets away from one tackle, but not the second. J.D. Bertrand, the captain, coming back after missing last week with a concussion, records his first tackle tonight. Well, right away, Bertrand makes his presence felt. When he missed last week, then the other guy, D.J. Brown, one of their safeties missed. The communication on the defense really suffered. One of the real leaders, Bertrand, as a communicator for this defense. Abuka in motion once again. Hand it to Henderson. Good blocking in front. 
And Henderson bursts forward across the 25, but it will be third and long, and this is what the Notre Dame defense was looking forward to doing. I think the line of demarcation tonight when Ohio State has the ball is third down, and it's either under six or six or more. If it's under six, Ohio State has the advantage because they've got the run pass threat with this talented backfield and line. If it's over six yards, the pressure packages with Al Golden, the defensive coordinator of Notre Dame, have the upper hand. Anderson split out wide, now back into the backfield. You've got Marvin Harrison Jr. and Benjamin Morrison locked in a primetime matchup at the bottom of your screen. Third and long. McCord settles, fires, Stover, first down. The transitioned tight end who has shown incredible skill picks up 14 and moves the sticks. Really nice read by Kyle McCord. They showed pressure, then they only rushed three. And Stover just finds a nice hole in the middle of the zone. They're dropping eight. He turns quickly, shows his numbers. And they're going to go quick here and run it up the gut. Travion Henderson picks up three before being shoved backward. The difference between Ohio State's offense this year and last year with C.J. Stroud, who was the second guy picked in the draft, is on these second down plays, they're more likely to run the football and try to get into a third and manageable. They've got more trust right now in their running game and trying to take some pressure off their new quarterback, Kyle McCord. McCord mentioned having the job in his hand has kind of alleviated some of the pressure for himself. He's played a little bit more relaxed in the last two weeks. He'll look to go to the air again, to the outside. It's Stover who breaks a tackle. Stiff arms another, and he dives forward for another first down. Benjamin Morrison couldn't wrap him up, and Stover goes to the tune of another eight. Well, one of the things that's been a problem for Notre Dame through the first four games is missed tackles. I think that's number 45 now on the season. Stover's a strong guy. He's got skill after the catch. Play action for McCoy. Looking for a deep ball down the sideline. Incomplete. He overthrew a Buka in stride. And that was Thomas Harper in coverage. The transfer from Oklahoma State has really solidified this back end of the defense. He's the slot corner working on Abuka, an outstanding receiver. And Harper is right with him stride for stride. Harper, who actually played for defensive coordinator at Ohio State, Jim Knowles, when he was at Oklahoma State, and he had a lot of wonderful things to say about that young man and his work ethic. Go empty here on second and ten. Notre Dame shows blitz. Now they fall back, and it's going to be, looks like, offsides. Now they're going to call it on Ohio State. Wow. Ball start. Offense, number 70. Five-yard penalty. First down. It looked like Leofau was going to be the guy that caused this. They're going to call it on the right tackle, Josh Fryer. I don't know. That was very close. Awfully close. And Ryan Day not happy about it. Ryan Day now in his fifth full season as the head man at Ohio State. And the 44-year-old has done a whole lot of winning in Columbus. Overall record has been impeccable, 48-6. and six. But a penalty sets up second and 15. Play clock down to five. Henderson looking for the hole. Can't find it. Javante Jean-Baptiste, the transfer from Ohio State, wraps up his former teammate. Uh, Jean-Baptiste liked it at Ohio State, loved playing for Larry Johnson, the defensive line coach. I just thought he would have more opportunities. There was a very talented defensive line room there, and he has become a real force on this Notre Dame defense through the first four games. Ohio State has been converting less than 50% on third and short and less than 40% on third down all year. Here's third and 12 from McCord. Dials it up down the middle of the field. In incomplete. He was overthrowing a Buka again. Xavier Watts was deep in coverage, had a break on the football, and it's fourth down. Kyle McCord was kind of lucky on this one because there was a safety back there over the top. A Buka is going to work down the middle of the field, but you're going to see the safety coming over the top. Xavier Watts in position. So in, in essence, they double covered Ibuka. And McCord very lucky that one wasn't intercepted. So it'll be a punt on the first offensive possession for Ohio State. Chris Tyree, former running back, now wide receiver, will go back to return it from Jesse Micro, who despite having that last name is six foot four, 220 pounds. 
Get it off just before the play clock expires. Micro gets it away. And Tyree calls for the fair catch, makes it at the 11. And it'll be our first look at Sam Hartman and this explosive Notre Dame offense when we come back. A 36-yard punt has him pinned deep. Notre Dame football is brought to you by Bud Light. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Well, we're underway here at Notre Dame Stadium to a terrific scene. And now Sam Hartman. This was his first big game that he circled. Home game for him in front of an incredible crowd. And he's mentioned the support since coming over from Wake Forest has really been special. Yeah, I mean, everything about him has been outstanding for Notre Dame. The talent, the experience, but it's his calming presence, I think, that's had the biggest impact on not just this offense, but this entire Notre Dame team. The offense has been spectacular, 40-plus points in all four of their games so far. They get to the motion man. Now Estime, nowhere to go, gets back to the line of scrimmage. Tyleek Williams with a quick, quick burst to the running back and no gain for the Irish. Now Tyleek Williams and Michael Hall Jr. on the inside are going to be a handful for these two guards. Rocco Spindler that time was working on Williams and kind of got driven into the backfield. Now, Devin Ford's going to be in there at running back. Notre Dame will use five different men in the backfield. Estime is the bell cow, but the other four all bring a specific skill set. Hartman on second down with plenty of time in the pocket and finally finds a wide open receiver. Chris Tyree with a big gain and dumped down at the 35. Josh Proctor finally catches up after a 25-yard pickup from the senior. We're watching Tyree do a nice job transitioning from running back to wide receiver, and this time he's going to just sit down in the zone. He read zone coverage. He did the right thing. Sit down in the hole and let the quarterback find you. Nice adjustment to coverage by Chris Tyree. We asked Marcus Freeman what it's been like to have Tyree now transfer over to wide receiver. He said it's his work ethic. He actually really studies the craft more than anything else. It's allowed him to have success early on this year. First set of downs. Estime back in there instead. Oh, it's just devoured. Great job by Ohio State to recognize. And Jack Sawyer coming off the edge gets a hand on it. And the former high school quarterback wrecks this immediately. Yeah, he had eyes on the quarterback, timed his jump unblocked and did what he's supposed to do can't get to the quarterback get a hand on the football they moved him around a lot last year in Jim Knowles first year this year they're kind of keeping him in the same spot and he has been much more productive playing that basic defensive end position second down and ten Take it to Estime, swing it to the outside. Their tight end, Mitchell Evans, is spilled across the 40. Sets up third and short. Lathan Ransom with his first tackle tonight. So Ohio State defense has played very well through the first three games. Again, now this is their biggest challenge, the best offense they will have faced. Last year they had good numbers all the way until the end and then they gave up some yards and points to Penn State and then the last two games against Michigan and Georgia got exposed by giving up too many big plays. That's been their point of emphasis so far this season. Allowing 6.7 points per game through their first three. Thomas the motion man, third and three. Hartman, who is progression, finds the soft spot. Right back to Evans for a first down. Just great poise in the pocket and no panic by Sam Hartman. You're going to see now his eyes, he's looking this way first. He's reading to the right of the formation, and it's one, two, back to three right there in the middle for the easy first down. In the pregame show, they talked about Sam Hartman used to throwing in tight spaces. The offense he played out at Wake Forest, there was a lot of what's called a slow mesh, and he threw passes about two or three yards off the line of scrimmage with lots of bodies around him. He's very comfortable in the pocket. Hand off, and again, great job by the Ohio State defense to sniff out the run as Estime get down low. Tommy Eichenberg with a stop. Time now for the progressive game flow, and uh, this is exactly what we were talking about in terms of the two quarterbacks, but the experience and the presence of Sam Hartman, it's clear it's his 50th start at this level. Well, everything Kyle McCord is seeing is for the first time. Everything Sam Hartman's seen, he's already seen. And he delivers right on the money once again. 
to the 45-yard line for Jaden Thomas. I mean, you can try to disguise coverages and, and show him something in the pre-snap, but he's seen everything. You know, in that many games, he knows what is a defense is trying to do to him. Now, if you get pressure on him and you make him uncomfortable, then, then you still have a chance to slow him down. Jabron Payne in there at running back, already the fourth running back we've seen on this opening possession. Great house in motion, hand it to Payne, up the gut, and he's going to drag the pile for a first down. Yeah, they told us Jabron Payne is a guy who, you know, he, he does a little bit of everything, and they ask him to do a lot of unique things. And Wolves might even see him in a wildcat down by the goal line, just inside zone power football, good push between the center and the right guard. And Payne gets right in, fits right in there and gets the first down. How about that? Four running backs already. Keeping everybody fresh. Now Hartman slowing it down, waiting for the right call. First and ten, back to the air. Hartman in trouble, spins away, gets it to Payne. Payne needs to make a man miss and can't do so. Does get back to the line of scrimmage, picks up one on the play, and then a flag comes in late. Yeah, just a, a late move by Igbenosan. I mean, he was in good coverage. He did a nice job keeping it to a short game, but just a little extracurricular at the end of the play in the white. All right, you did your job. You made a nice play. Now, you don't need to do anything more. Just kind of rode him in there. Didn't really push or hit. He just kind of rode him in past the white. And when you do it on the home sideline. There's line, no foul that's... for a late hit oh, out of bounds. Okay. Second down. Oh, good. Good. This is a Big Ten crew. Larry Smith, our referee. And Terry McCauley gives us the thumbs up sign of approval. I would say that that would have been ticky tack if anything yep. else. Yep. Tenth play of the drive up coming either way. And it will be second and nine. But Notre Dame marching down the field as they've done all season long through their first four games. Starting with that week zero victory in Dublin against Navy. Hartman. Steps up. Oh, my right. catch! Wow! Mitchell Evans across his body. Spectacular. Evans is primarily the inline blocking tight end, but look at this catch. Working against Steel Chambers, the inside linebacker. One arm is being held by the linebacker, and he just reaches up and snatches it for a big-time catch and a first down. This has been known as tight end university for a reason, and Mitchell Evans is expected to be that next guy who takes a step forward now as a junior. That play will go a long way. Estimate back in there, first down. Hand it to him. Estimate. And he just can't find any space early on as Igben Osen comes up to make the play. Time now for the honor roll brought to you by Nissan. Well, Audric Estime has not gotten it going yet. Jaden Greathouse is a freshman wide receiver who's played really well this year. We haven't seen him touch the ball yet. On defense, we mentioned Michael Hall Jr., very disruptive on the inside. And Tommy Eichenberg just fits the prototype mold of a middle linebacker at Ohio State. Great run defender, very smart, the captain and quarterback of that defense. Second and nine. Two tight ends in there for Notre Dame. And it's estimate following his blockers and picks up a couple. Sets up third and manageable as Steele Chambers, the former running back, comes in to make a big play. Well, they're definitely in field goal range right now because watching their place kicker in pregame, he has a monster leg, Spencer Schrader. But a third down and pretty manageable for a quarterback like Sam Hartman, who's off to a very fast start right now, six for seven. Fiftieth start for Hartman. All the experience. This is the game he was looking forward to. Merriweather in motion on third and six. Hartman, dump it. Payne makes one man miss and explodes forward. It's going to be awfully close. Looks like he's about a half yard shy of the first down. Now decision time for Marcus Freeman. You got a great drive going. You want to be the team that scores first. It's only a four-man rush. Ohio State showed pressure and dropped out. And Hartman did a nice job finding his dump down. And it's fourth and short. And Marcus Freeman wants to keep this momentum going behind that offensive line. Notre Dame three for three on fourth down on the season. Estimate the running back. And he's 235 pounds. I'd run behind Big Joe Alt, the left tackle. 
fake it to him. Now Hartman's going to have to do it himself. Gets away from the first. Oh, he's got space to get there, and he does. Lowers the shoulder at the end, and Sam Hartman picks up the first down. Showing that toughness early. Well, credit Ohio State for not biting the play fake. They were in perfect position to defend both receivers. And Sam Hartman, who doesn't run a lot, does a nice job. They're going to try to slip two receivers out. Ohio State has both of them covered. And Hartman does the only thing he can on that play, which is run for the first down. It looks like they're going to take a look at it. Ryan Day down there trying to get him to stop and look at it. Well, the first down is under further review. The real question here is where's that football? Again, the football is going to dictate where the spot is here, and he's holding it actually behind him when he goes out of bounds as, it's, as opposed to in front of him because of how he delivered this shoulder. And that's going to be awfully, awfully close. We'll step aside. They'll take a look at it. We'll have the result when we return to Notre Dame Stadium. There it was. He had to make it to the 17-yard line, and Cody Simon with a big-time hit. He hit him high and did not allow the football to get past the 17 yard line. The officials just made the call. Notre Dame was short of the line to gain. So Ohio State bends but doesn't break. And this defense making a massive play there to get it back to their offensive side. Well, good first possessions for both defenses, right? Both teams moved the ball and the defense came up with a stop. Now, Sam Hartman, I don't think he should have tried to reach the ball because he might have lost the football, too. He was protecting the ball, but it was just an outstanding tackle by Cody Simon on the sideline. So it brings out Kyle McCord in this Ohio State offense once again. It'll be a handoff to Henderson on first down, who wiggles his way across the 20 and down to the 22. Time now for the honor roll, brought to you by Nissan. Well, Marvin Harrison Jr., we've talked about it, an outstanding player. Travion Henderson's got the speed. He's got kind of back to his old form of his freshman year. On defense, Javante Jean-Baptiste, the transfer from Ohio State. And Maurice Lewifau, who's all over the field. Henderson again, no running room. Chopped down short of the 25. J.D. Bertrand, another play. And now third and medium. And again, another test for this Ohio State offense. Notre Dame's defense got their cleats in the ground. Kyle McCord. Going quick on third down. McCord feeling the pressure, looking to escape. Can't do so. Tripped up. Jordan Botello with a big play, and it's fourth down. Ohio State tried to go fast. We just mentioned Leofo and how he flies all over the field. He's the guy that's going to force the pressure. Watch number eight get into the backfield and force Kyle McCord to leave the pocket. And then he's wrapped up short of the first down. So another nice stop by the Notre Dame defense. Both defenses making some plays so far. Second punt of the day for Mirko. And he'll get it off with a fair catch. Chris Tyree has to just secure it, make sure he gets underneath it. It'll be a drive that starts from the 32 after a 42-yard boot. And Notre Dame another chance. Tomorrow night, T.J. Watt and the Steelers take on Jimmy Garoppolo and the Raiders in Las Vegas. Football night in America begins at 7 p.m. Eastern on NBC and Peacock. And Mike Tirico, Chris Collinsworth, and Melissa Stark will have the call. Tim Brown, legendary Heisman Trophy winner from Notre Dame. Of course, Raiders wide receiver for five seasons. Then Jerome Bettis with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Pro Football Hall of Famer. Absolute legend. The bus riding off into the sunset with a Super Bowl victory. Second possession now for Notre Dame after the defense forced a three and out. One minute and 22 seconds. Now here's the fifth running back of the night. The freshman Jeremiah Love. Now he was a track star in high school, has great breakaway speed. That's why he's on the field. Harmon sets up the screen. Jaden Greathouse, who has had a fantastic freshman campaign. The catch and run of 12 yards picks up a first down. Beautiful job by Rocco Spindler, the right guard, getting out in front of this screen. Watch number 50 come and get the key block. Greathouse, they get his hands on the football. There's the block right there on the safety, Proctor. And that's why that play opened up. Number 50 shows rush, gets out there, gets a block, and Greathouse turns it into a first down. This offensive line, especially those two tackles, and Spindler, who has just continued to improve game by game, but Joe Alton, Blake Fisher, one of the best offensive units in the country. Play action for Hartman. 
Dials it up again for Mitchell Evans. Spun down across midfield and across the 45. A little different look out of the Notre Dame offense. Normally, you don't see Mitchell Evans flanked out like that. He's an inline tight end. They have him split out like a wide receiver. And nobody really accounts for him. And Hartman finds him for a nice, easy completion. Change of formation. Kind of fooled the Ohio State defense on that one. Eight straight completions for Hartman against an Ohio State defense that's allowed 20 points through their first three games. There's not been any pressure on him. They've not been able to affect him or make him uncomfortable. Couple of running backs, fake it to one, hand it to Love. Jimmy Shake into the secondary. Jeremiah Love picks up another first down. Well, I like that action in the backfield. You called it. I mean, this is like an old school fake to one back and give it to the other. And it freezes the inside linebackers. The inside fake holds the linebackers, and then they give it to Love and that quickness into the hole and another first down for the Irish. And that will end the first quarter. So Love's gain of 10 sets up Notre Dame in prime field position at the Ohio State 34-yard line to begin the second quarter. A scoreless tie after one between two of the top five winningest programs in college football history as the Notre Dame Fighting Irish looking to prove to themselves and the country they belong at the top. Aerial coverage brought to you by Ford here at Notre Dame Stadium. And we've got a scoreless tie for the first quarter of this game. Both offenses finding their footing. And Todd Blackledge, we look at what's gone on so far. What stood out to you? Well, I think what stood out to me is that Ohio State has done what they wanted to do defensively, make Notre Dame one-dimensional. But they have not been able to affect Sam Hartman. He is picking them apart. I expect to see Ohio State go to some more pressure here and try to get after Sam Hartman, get him out of his rhythm. Defensively for both teams, it feels like that was a big test for both of them coming in, yeah. certainly for this Ohio State defense. This will be a big one. They got the turnover on downs on the first possession, yeah. but bending, not breaking, feels like what we've seen so far from both sides. Yeah, I mean, I think both defenses have played pretty well, and, and they've obviously no score on the scoreboard yet, so that's a good sign for the defense. But right now, it just feels like Notre Dame's got a little bit more going on offensively than Ohio State does. And they'll look to, to cap this drive and get the first points of the day. And it off on this first down run and another positive gain this time for Devin Ford. So we've seen all five running backs. And it's amazing. It really is. Uh, in a quarter. In one quarter, we've seen five different running backs. And obviously, this guy coming back in, Estime, is the bell cow. I mean, he is the main guy. Coming off of a career high last week of 176 yards and a touchdown against Central Michigan. He's the most physical of all of them, but they are very confident in playing all five guys. Second down and five. Fake it to Estime. Hartman steps up in the pocket and just overthrows Jaden Greathouse. Jordan Hancock with excellent coverage downfield. And that time they brought Eichenberg on a linebacker pressure, and they're playing man-to-man -man behind it. And good coverage on Greathouse. It was Jordan Hancock in good position. Big third down play right here for the Ohio State defense. These two offensive tackles for Notre Dame are outstanding. Alt and Blake Fisher. That's why we haven't called the two defensive ends yet, but a good chance for pressure here on this third down play. Empty on third and five. Here come the linebacker. Hartman feels it. Fade away. Oh, nearly intercepted. Tyleek Williams got hands on it as Holden stays the intended target, was in between two defenders. So they showed pressure. They bring linebackers and drop the defensive tackles out. And so two plays in a row, they've made Sam Hartman a little uncomfortable. Throws that one into a crowd, and very lucky it wasn't picked off. And so Jim Knowles, coming in to start the second quarter, said we've got to change it up and try to make him a little more uncomfortable, and that's why they got the stop there on third down. Makes it a 47-yard field goal attempt for the USF transfer, Spencer Schrader. Three for six on the season overall. And this one's going to curve out. No good from Schrader. Two offensive Notre Dame possessions. No points. Scoreless. Still here.
No score here in South Bend. Marvin Harrison Jr. has not caught a pass yet. Here's why. On third down, they've decided we're going to double him. They've doubled both he and Ibuka the first third down. Then this last third down play, here it is again. Double coverage on Marvin Harrison Jr. Not letting him get the football. Ohio State about to start their third possession of the ball game. I guarantee you they'll figure a way to get the ball to this guy in this possession. And he's matched up with Morrison once again. Last year's freshman All-American. Ibuka on the handoff. Gets to the outside and a positive gain. Picks up eight going out of bounds. Shoved out by Watts. You have two elite players on your offense. Actually, Travion Henderson's an elite talent as well at running back. But Ibuka and Marvin Harrison Jr. are elite number one type receivers, first round draft pick type receivers like they've had. Got to get them involved in your offensive play calling now. Henderson in there on second down and one. Protects the football and bursts through. First down for Henderson. And where Kyle McCord has been at his best in the last couple weeks is on play action passes. And this is a perfect situation now. You just ran for a first down with Henderson. You've got a chance maybe to go play action here and try to take a shot at either 18 or 2. Harrison in motion. McCord on play action right on cue. Pulls it down. Looking to run himself. And dives forward near midfield. Got hit after the fact. And no flag comes in. Down at the 48. Well, he made a good decision. There was nowhere to go with the football. Notre Dame in good position on both of those receivers. It was kind of three defenders over the top of two. And Kyle McCord makes a smart decision to run for a positive gain and bring up second and medium. Board measured so far. Second and five. He's three of five passing 19 yards. Feels like it's only a matter of time before that big play for the Buckeyes. McCord fading away. Lost one. Oh, did that come down? Cade Stover with an unbelievable effort. But the flag came in. D.J. Brown was all over him. It was incomplete. Yeah, I think they're going to call pass interference on D.J. Brown because the ball was thrown inside. McCord's going to get rid of the football. Pass interference. Defense number two. That penalty is declined. Result of the play. It's the first down. Because the ball was thrown back to the inside, D.J. Brown ended up grabbing him and getting the pass interference. Now, they said the penalty was declined. Uh, that's not a catch. It shouldn't be a catch. No, that's an incomplete pass. Now they got to take another look at this. After a quick review, the ruling of the pass is incomplete. However, the pass interference, defense number two, will be enforced to the spot of that foul, first down. All right, quick cleanup. Yeah, great job by this officiating crew. Correction, full 15. And Larry Smith making sure that he is 1,000% descriptive <laughs> for us. So we've got it correct. Well, we talked to Marvin Harrison Jr. about Kyle McCord. They were high school teammates at St. Joseph's Philadelphia area where they were just outstanding. Three years together there, now three years together in Columbus. And what Marvin said about Kyle and his comfortability is he said, I can't even imagine being in a quarterback competition because... All you're thinking about is don't mess up, don't mess up, don't mess up. Now he can go out there and play a little bit more freely. And I think that affected him last week against Western Kentucky and part of why he played so much better. Henderson split out wide on first down. Fake the handoff. Now McCord delivers too high. Looking for Stover again. D.J. Brown with solid coverage. Both of these teams like to play a lot of man coverage. Here's Stover here, just going to run the over route. D.J. Brown going to be in man coverage and is going to stay right with him. Gets underneath the route, makes it a very difficult throw for Kyle McCord and brings up second and ten. Most teams against Ohio State wouldn't play man yeah. coverage against this level of skill, but Marcus Freeman said we can't shy away from it. Well, they got to pick their spots, you know, and they've also picked their spots of when to bracket Marvin Harrison Jr., Ibuka in motion. Henderson the handoff. Stutter step move and picks up positive yardage. See, this is the difference between Ohio State's offense this year with 
Kyle McCord, and last year was C.J. Stroud. Second and ten last year, they're going to throw the football. They're going to believe they can get a first down with two throws. This year, a little more, let's lean on the offensive line, let's lean on our running backs, and let's not put as much on our new quarterback. But now with third down and eight, it's up to Kyle McCord to make a throw. You've got Ibuka and Marvin Harrison Jr. on the same side of the field. And Chip Trainum, the running back. Third and eight. McCord lets it fly. Trainum gets it. First down. Just had to get past that first surge and did break the tackle of Morrison to move the sticks. Yeah, I think Morrison just kind of put his head down and missed. He just kind of whiffed. If he makes a tackle, it's short of the first down. There's the completion and just a whiff on the tackle in Ohio State with a new set of downs. And credit Kyle McCord for finding his outlet receiver and getting the first down. There's so many playmakers on this offense. A lot of times just throw short and let them make something happen with the ball in their hands. Trainum stays in there. And he's got the football. Gets across the 20. Dragged down after a pickup of five. Guy's an interesting story, right? He transferred from Arizona State. He came here originally to be a linebacker. And he's played a little bit of both. But he's gotten a lot of run here so far in the early part of the season as, uh, as one of the three tailbacks that's seeing action for Ohio State. 5'11", 233 pounds. Coming off a game in which he had a touchdown last week against Western Kentucky. Second and six. Twelve personnel, two tight ends, both to the right side for Ohio State. Train him. Can't find the hole. Notre Dame closes it up quickly with Javante Jean-Baptiste. Yeah, nice play by Jean-Baptiste. You know, his role here is different than at Ohio State. He was just kind of a wide pass rusher there. They ask him to play inside. Has to be a little bit more rugged. And defending the run, that time he did a nice job coming back inside and making the play. Third down and five. Notre Dame is showing pressure right now. You see the linebackers in a mug look. That means they come up and cover up the linemen. Doesn't mean they're going to blitz, but they're showing it. McCord feeling the pressure, delivers over the middle. Beautiful throw. And Buka on the slant picks up the first down. They did bring pressure, but they tried to drop Leofau out underneath that route. But he just is not quite fast enough to get there. And Kyle McCord throws it right in front of him. They kind of knew what route was coming, but McCord made a nice timely throw. First and goal, train him up the middle, and he gets across the five. First real opportunity, it feels like, for Ohio State knocking on the door here. An offense that has been spectacular, averaging over 40 points per game themselves to start this season. Nine trips into the red zone so far, six touchdowns. Great opportunity here with second and goal. Trainum has stayed in there after the big third down conversion. Trainum. Runs into a wall, keeps the legs churning. It's going to be just short down to the one. Here's third and goal, and Notre Dame believes that their red zone offense is, or red zone defense rather, is much improved from yeah. what it was a year ago. Yeah, that was a tough area for them a year ago, but this is uh, this is man on man down here now. Big, powerful offensive line in Ohio State. They've got extra bodies in there right now. Mayan Williams, the running back. He's got it. Williams stops short. Ball comes out. And it's fourth down. Javante Jean-Baptiste, another big play against his former team. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is beautiful. He's playing inside. He's going to fight through a block and get the, to the ball carry right behind the line of scrimmage. I and mean, that is outstanding work by Jean-Baptiste. 
Marcus Freeman trying to make sure they have the right personnel in the game. He's taking his best corner, Benjamin Morrison, out. So it's a bigger defensive unit. Two tailbacks in there. Trainum as the fullback. Williams as the, the tailback here on fourth and goal. Fake it to Williams. McCord rolls. McCord surveys. Tipped up. Incomplete. Notre Dame with a stand. Jalen Sneed, number three, is the guy who got the tip. He doesn't play more than 24, 25 snaps a game, but he's a great athlete and made a tremendous play. Interesting to see both these defenses thriving early because both defensive coordinators now in year two feel like their players know yes. the system so well and they're executing at a high level to start this game. So it'll go from the one yard line. Yeah, that's the good news for Ohio State. They totally flipped the field, the worst starting field position for either team right now. And Hartman's just going to try to get a little breathing room on the QB sneak and does exactly that. Picks up two. This first half is zooming by at this moment. Clock doesn't stop on that first down anymore. And no. certainly with no scores, we're seeing a lot of defensive impact and these long drives as well. Yeah. It's been get the ball down the field, but not get it into the end zone. Yeah. Whereas Ohio State, if they were in this situation, might be a little bit conservative, not wanting to call a pass right here on second down inside the five. With Kyle McCord, I would expect to see Sam Hartman throw the football. Full house backfield, but I still think it's going to be a pass here. Second and seven. It is a run for Estimate. And Estimate looking wow. to break away. First down and more across the 20, all the way to the 25. He said he prides himself in not going down after the first two. Picks up 22. Well, beautiful job by the other back. Watch. Right there, watch Payne with the lead block. He's the guy that's going to set this up. Watch him take on the middle linebacker right there, Cody Simon. And then again, when Payne gets those shoulders going north and south, I, I mean, that, I, I don't know who would want to tackle that. We saw him. He came in our meeting. He is rocked up, man. That is a big physical running back. Has to be nearly six foot, about 230 pounds. Back to the ground. This time it's Devin Ford. And keeps the footing just long enough to get to the 30. Well, great job by Notre Dame getting the ball out of their own one yard line strictly by running the football Leaning on that offensive line again Joe Alt the left tackle Blake Fisher the right tackle But all five of those guys are getting the job done right now on this drive Obviously still a lot of time on the clock here, but just under five minutes to play all three timeouts short Notre Dame did defer to start this yep. game They'll get the football to start the third quarter and we've seen some elongated offensive possessions so far here tonight Go right back to the ground. This time, Jeremiah Love runs into a wall. Sent backward by Length and Ransom. Now, this is a welcome to big time football. Jeremiah Love got kind of running upright, and Ransom meets him right in the hole with a textbook tackle. Top four rushes to start this drive, four different ball carriers for Notre Dame and it's a third and three that's a way that's a way to keep your running back room competitive you know and engaged they all get to play and they all root each other on they all have handshakes with each other healthy smack as well third and three Hartman finally to the air lofts it incomplete heavy coverage on Jaden Thomas and Josh Proctor wins the battle to force fourth down yeah Josh Proctor was in perfect position they expected the short throw. You can see he's got his heels right around the area of the first down marker. Knows the route's coming. He didn't really get a hand in there. Just was kind of a low and outside throw and another stop for the Ohio State defense. It'll be Bryce McPherson sending it away for Notre Dame. And Emeka Ebuka back to retrieve it for Ohio State. Line drive delivery, fair catch called for, and May just in front of the 20. 346 to play in this second quarter. Both offenses still looking for a spark here in Notre Dame. 
Notre Dame football is brought to you by Allstate. You're in good hands. By Invesco QQQ, the official ETF of the NCAA. And by Jersey Mike Subs, be a sub above. Well, back in 1935, this for a long time was known as the game of the century when Bill Shakespeare, that's right, Bill Shakespeare <laughs> led Notre Dame back after trailing 13 nothing first meeting between these two. The Irish would win 18 to 13. This one now the eighth meeting and still scoreless towards the end of the second. First target, first catch for Marvin Harrison Jr. Picks up eight on first down. Yeah, they had to get him the football. We were almost to the first half. They put three receivers out to the wide side, left him as the single guy on the backside working against against Morrison and he's an excellent route runner and catcher of the football and finally gets his name in the books second and short the forward on the handoff Henderson upended quick play Gabriel Rubio comes in and makes the stop third down yeah Rubio missed last week they were excited to get him back in that defensive tackle rotation Made a nice play there on second down. Going quick on third and three. McCord lofts complete. Stover again tripped up for a first down. Second time we've seen Ohio State try to go quick on third down and not let Notre Dame get set on defense. Neither one of these teams are playing with a lot of pace, right? And even in the first part of the season, they both have been averaging about 62, 63 offensive plays a game. Ohio State doing that because of a young quarterback. Notre Dame just choosing to huddle right now for the most part through their first four games. Cam Hart, captain for Notre Dame, locked in the battle with Harrison. Play action from McCord. Steps up, looking to run. Slips the tackle and just gets leveled across the line of scrimmage. J.D. Bertrand came in with a nose for the football. I like the changeup though by Ryan Day choosing to throw some on first down. That's the best way to get Marvin Harrison and Abuka involved. They got it the last first down that time. Good coverage and McCord had to run the football, but easier to try to get those balls out to those guys on rundowns. Second and eight. McCord back to the air, lost it down the sideline. Oh, Marvin Harrison Jr. A flag is down. He brought it in as he was locked up with Morrison. And if it stands, it's a big gain and a first down into Notre Dame territory. This holding defense number 20. The penalty is declined. Result in the play. It's a first down. No safety help this time, so it's single coverage. Morrison's in good position. Doesn't matter. You just need to throw it somewhere near this guy. He's being held. He's being grabbed. He still goes up. We're going to take a look at this, but that is vintage Marvin Harrison Jr. right there. Big body, good hands, strength, speed. And it looked like maybe his hand was coming down out of bounds. I think that's the key that they're looking for now. It's the white gloves, so it's difficult. But let's bring in Terry McCauley. Terry, what do you see here? No, you got it exactly right. That's yeah. exactly what they're looking for. Does the hand come down first out of bounds before the, the, the forearm comes down? It appears to me it does from this angle, from what we're seeing. Outstanding individual effort. Unreal. from Harrison and again it, there's a reason that NFL scouts have called him comically good yeah he has every skill that you would possibly want in a receiver but this one won't count however it was holding on Morrison yeah so oh, similar to what we saw earlier with that Stover initial completion turn in completion they're going to have the same ruling here well good job by Kyle McCord recognizing that there was no double coverage no safety help this one's probably not going to stand but that time the safety didn't come over the top. It's one-on-one -on -one against Benjamin Morrison, and you are not going to make very much money going one-on-one -on -one against Marvin Harrison Jr. through the course of a football game. And, Todd, I know that it'll wipe off the 32-yard the completion, but more than anything, that's got to be a confidence boost to see that type of yeah. completion come down from Kyle McCord. Yeah, I mean, these two guys have, have had chemistry that goes back to high school. After review... The ruling on the fill of a catch has been reversed to an incomplete pass. However, pass interference, number 20 of the defense, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. So that became a pass interference now on Benjamin Morrison. Initially, they ruled it as a hold. Yeah. 
Well, he had a hold of the jersey, and, and that was clearly a hold. I'm not sure why that got changed. I'd love to hear from Terry McCauley. Why'd that get changed, Terry? Uh, I'm a little confused as you are. The ball is clearly in flight. When he grabs that jersey, it, it is definitely pass interference, but the original call was holding. That can't be changed by replay. So the only thing I can think of is on the field, they, they realized their error and got it corrected. It ends up resulting at a first down at the Notre Dame 49. Handoff Henderson. And he wiggles to the 45. Well, take a look at it again. It's, it's single coverage. Benjamin Morrison, their best cover corner. It's clearly a penalty. I mean, he's got a hold of the jersey. McCord looking for Harrison. Broken up. Morrison was right with him this time. Now, this is a confident young man. He sat in that meeting room with us. I think he relished the opportunity to go against a guy like Marvin Harrison Jr. and Emeka Abuka. He was right on the point right there. Third down again. Ohio State so far in the ball game, four of seven on third down, better than what they've been doing through the first three games. Third and six. Empty backfield here. Notre Dame's offsides. And they'll call the timeout. Yeah, they're lucky because Bethel timeout. was offsides just Notre in his Dame alignment. The first of the half. Will be 30 seconds in length. So both sides will talk it over here. Critical point towards the end of the first half at Notre Dame Stadium. Well, so much talk about potential matchups between Marvin Harrison Jr. and Benjamin Morrison. And Morrison has held his own pretty good. So far, he's got the one penalty that we just saw a moment ago right there. And only one catch on the night for Marvin Harrison Jr. Got the knockdown on that play, so pretty effective night so far on the elite player, Marvin Harrison Jr., but a big third down play right here. It's third and six. McCord with time, steps up, perfectly delivered. Mecca at Boca, first down, Ohio State. Great protection. I mean, this is a route that takes time. It's play action pass. Good protection. McCord steps away from the pocket a little bit in order to buy a little more time to let Ibuka get all the way across. McCord looking for another chunk. It's Ibuka again inside the red zone of the 15. Good read. Zone coverage. He finds the hole. This, this is what Ibuka does so well as a slot receiver. He knows how to find openings in the defense. He read the coverage. He's a real student of the game. He and Marvin Harrison Jr., Ryan Hartline said they are ultra preparation guys and detail guys. Report on first down. Looking towards the end zone. Abuka got it. Touchdown, Ohio State. Well, he may or may not have caught it, but he ran a beautiful route. It's a red zone route. Here's the end of the, the play. On the field of no, a touchdown did not catch it. Under further review, he yes. ran a beautiful route, but that is an incomplete pass. Well thrown ball by Kyle McCord. They kind of felt like they had something going with Egbuka on this drive, and they went to him three times. But this one's going to get called back. Should be a quick review, and the crowd just saw it for the first time. When I talk about both of these two guys kind of following in this pattern of Ohio State wide receivers that are first round players starring in the NFL now, Brian Hartline, the offensive coordinator, is the wide receiver coach. He himself was an NFL wide receiver, and he has done a great job not only recruiting guys, but coaching them and developing them and the route running ability of view, these receivers. The running of the pass is incomplete. It will be second down. Please reset the game clock to 41 seconds. 4 1. They are tremendous route runners, and that's just the coaching of Heartline and just the details, the fine details of running routes. That was a beautiful route by Egbuka, but not 
able to come down with the ball. There's Brian Hartline right there, fellow Canton, Ohio native, played at Glen Oak High School, played at Ohio State, played with the Dolphins, Chiefs, outstanding football coach. Ohio State with all three timeouts left, 41 seconds left. Notre Dame will get the football to start the third quarter as they look for one more stand in this second quarter. Swing it. Henderson looking for the edge, and he just gets devoured by the pile. Yeah. Howard Cross in pursuit. Really nice play by Howard Cross. Just working from inside out. Come out. Ohio yeah. State, the first and a half, 30 seconds to wait. So Ohio State will take their first time out of this first half. 34 seconds, looking to get in the end zone for the first time. On the All-State Halftime Report, recap of this first half. We'll see if Ohio State can punch it in here. Washington State, Oregon State, a heavily offensive battle. And Oregon with a dominant victory at home over Colorado. Meanwhile, third down and eight. Mecca Agbuka has been the go-to guy in this drive so far. He's down wide to the left. McCord looking end zone. Oh, nearly intercepted and incomplete. Cade Stover, the intended target. And D.J. Brown had a real chance to take it away. Well, this is double coverage on Stover. You've got underneath coverage by Watts. And then coming over the top, D.J. Brown. They anticipated the throw down the seam. Perfect coverage by Notre Dame on that third down play, forcing the field goal attempt. 31-yard attempt for Jaden Fielding, rather Felding, in this latter stages of the second quarter. And Felding. I think, I think Marcus Freeman called a timeout, I think. And it looks like that. Maybe not. It looked like they were blowing the whistle like they were stopping play, but I guess not. It will be a good field goal for Felding. 3-0 Ohio State. The scoreless tie. No more in South Bend. We expected a close game between these two teams. Evenly matched coming into this one. And 3-0 yeah. with under 30 seconds left in the second. Defenses have won. Ohio State finally gets on the board. Yeah, and Ohio State, the thing their defense did in that first half is they gave up some yards, but not explosive plays. Only one pass play of over 20 yards for Sam Hartman in this Notre Dame offense in the first half. Fair catch made for by Devin Ford. So, Sam Hartman with two timeouts, 26 seconds to work with. Can he get his team in a field goal range to try to tie this game? They will get the football to start the second half. And you just brought it up during the commercial. Yeah. Last year when these two teams met, it was just 10-7 at halftime. Right. Notre Dame with a three-point advantage. Yeah, I don't know if I do anything but take a knee here, honestly. I mean, you're going to get the ball to start the third quarter. Go in, make some adjustments at halftime. You're three points down and come out with a good drive to start the third quarter. And that's exactly what Sam Hartman does. Highly anticipated matchup coming in. Top 10 showdown in South Bend. The Irish have gotten close. They haven't gotten on the board. Ohio State finally gets a field goal to break the scoreless tie. And in a defensive slugfest, the Buckeyes with a narrow advantage. Let's go down to Ahmed Farid with Ryan Day. So, Coach, a late-scoring drive for your offense right there. How do you feel like your quarterback, Kyle McCord, has handled the magnitude of this? Uh, you know, he's it's his first time in this kind of environment. You know, he's, he's working through it. I mean, I, I, we're down here on a one-yard line. We can't punch it in. You know, I'm pissed about that. But, you know, we're playing hard. we got to keep going. I mean, we, you know, almost pull this one in over here. We kick three points. That's okay. It's going to be that kind of a game. We knew it was going to be four quarters. we got to regroup here at halftime and just figure out how to get a little bit more rhythm on offense. I thought we did a little bit there. We just got to finish off these drives defense has got to continue to do what they're doing other side yeah your defense has been thriving what do you like most about the way that side of the ball is playing I like the physicality i like the way they're running around you saw a couple guys show up in the back end playing physical that's what it's going to be in the second half thanks coach no every coach we talked to said it'd be a slugfest they knew it three nothing at the half notre dame down this first half recap brought to you by geico I'm on a mission now. If you could paint a perfect picture of what college football should look like, it is a perfect night for football. Steps up. Oh, what a catch! Wow! Tipped up, incomplete. Notre Dame with a stand. It's easy to Geico. I'm on a mission now. Time now for the college football bulletin brought to you by Genesis after Ohio State. 
Gets a late field goal to go up 3-0. This was the matchup we've been looking forward to. Marvin Harrison Jr., Benjamin Morrison, pretty tight so far. Harrison with just the one catch, but the DPI called against Morrison. Five consecutive games for this Notre Dame offense, dating back to the Gator Bowl last year with 40 or more points. Longest in school history, scoreless through two. And the quarterback comparison, this is where we felt like the game could be swayed yeah. the Irish. And so far, it's been even between these two. Let's go back to that call on Marvin Harrison Jr. and Benjamin Morrison. Bring in Terry McCauley. This was ruled as an incomplete catch. Terry, take us through it. So, yeah, Noah, let's clean this up. When we went back and looked at this, we noticed what a lot of viewers notice. His right foot is down when he gains control. We checked with the Big Ten office, and they said they reversed it because they believe the receiver lost control of the ball when, the, when it hit the ground. There is some evidence of the hand coming off, but it doesn't completely come off. I don't think it's indisputable. I don't think it should have re been reversed for that reason. Yeah. And that's the key. It was called as a catch initially on the yeah. field. It was a, a pickup of 32 yards, so you lose about a, a little bit more than 15 yards when it's all said and done on the DPI. Right. It resulted in a field goal, but you never know how that drive eventually ends up. And now Notre Dame will get the football to start the third quarter. And it will be a touchback to start at the 25. Let's go down to Catherine Tappen. All right, Noah, I just talked to Marcus Freeman, and I asked him what adjustments they need to make on offense to get things going here in the second half. And he said, listen, when we dominate the line of scrimmage, good things happen. So he told his O-line, find ways to dominate. He said, I think we're driving the ball so well, but we've got to finish those drives. As for defense, he said, I am very happy with the way they're playing. They've got to continue to be aggressive. We don't want to play not to lose. On fourth and one, we're going for it every single time, Noah. Strong words from yeah. Marcus Freeman, and he said that was the key from last year. He felt like they played not to lose, yep. and he wants to be the aggressor here tonight. Well, it's it's going to be on Sam Hartman here in these final 30 minutes. They and they've got to stretch the field. They've got to get some big time plays, some chunk plays, to get things revved up. Estimate the first down carry. Can they get him going as well as he spun forward after a pickup of four? Steel Chambers chops him down. Estime has been quiet by his own standards, has been just outstanding, already with over 500 yards and five touchdowns for the first four games of the season. Well, that's a good run on first down, though, against this rugged Ohio State defense. You get five yards. You put yourself in a good situation, second and six, I should say, four yards. Putting it Evans in motion again. Hartman with time. Steps up. It's Evans. And a new career high for Mitchell Evans. Five receptions. This one goes for a first down. Yeah, we kind of thought it was Holden Stays was the th receiving threat at tight end. Already with four touchdown catches. This is Joe Alt. Nice job with him and the left guard just kind of doing an exchange on the stunt. And a good clean pocket for Sam Hartman. Play action on first down. Hartman loading up the deep ball down the sideline. It's incomplete. He was looking for Jaden Thomas, who was locked up with Davison Igbenosin. Second and ten. Yeah, really good coverage by Igbenosin. Not only was he stride for stride, but he really pinned the receiver on the sideline. I mean, this ball has to be perfectly thrown to have a chance. Both guys kind of pushing and grabbing. Well, <laughs> guess you see that sleeve coming all the way off. A little more grab by the DB. Well, Aiden Olsen gets away with it, and it's second and ten after good coverage. Estime into the second level and across midfield. Well, let's take a look from above, brought to you by Walmart. Take a look at this. Now, watch Estime as he gets to this point. Watch the quickness in the hole. This is a 240-pound back. Foot in the ground, lateral cut and then turns on to speed the outside. You don't see big running backs make that kind of cut very often. I mean, this is an it's incredible cut by a big man to add about eight, ten more yards to that run. He says he watches every game Bijan Robinson plays for that exact reason. A big guy who can play like a small guy. And we saw it right there. First down and ten. Jeremiah Love around the outside. And a burst of speed across the 45. Eichenberg the tackle and now this Notre Dame offense starting to find a rhythm to start the third quarter Yeah, they've got a nice little thing going here coming out of the locker room some nice adjustments by Jared Parker the 
Offensive coordinator, first year in that role, replacing Tommy Reese. This is counter football, pulling the backside guard and tackle, getting outside. Jared Parker right there. I really enjoyed visiting with him. He's a tight end coach. Marcus Freeman just thinks the world of him. And a lot of people question, you know, if he was the right guy to hire as a coordinator. But I think he's proved himself through the first four games of the year. Estimate. Patient. A little too patient. Wrapped up by Tyleek Williams. And it's third down upcoming for Notre Dame. Tyleek Williams is, he's very powerful. I mean, this is Joe Alt that he's working on in this play, and he pushes Joe Alt kind of back into the ball carry. Really nice play by Tyleek Williams. Third and two. Who will be the go-to guy for Hartman? Estimate the handoff. Keeps the legs churning. It's going to be close, but it looks like he's short. Well, remember, Marcus just told KT after halftime, we're going to go for it on fourth and one every time. And he might have his first decision right here. It felt like that type of play call as well, setting it up. Hurry up, hurry up, speed up. Probably a quarterback sneak. Hartman around the outside. Oh, he gets pushed back. That's going to be a stop on fourth down. Styles and Ransom come up to make the play. On the line again. And for the second down, down, first down, second time it's well, Hartman denied on fourth down. Here's Styles right here. Watch him fall in and just make a high tackle on Sam Hartman. And once again on fourth down, Sam Hartman is stopped short of the goal. Why don't you give that to Estime on fourth and one and let the power back try to get it? So Ohio State's benefit, and now a big game for Henderson. Bucks it to the outside. Henderson's got speed down the sideline. Nobody's going to catch him. Touchdown, Ohio State. 61 yards. The ruling on the field is a touchdown. Officials timeout for an injured player. That is Marvin Harrison Jr. down and in some pain. Yeah, he got rolled up on. He was blocking. In fact, his block was the key to the touchdown. But Xavier Watts, number zero, is going to kind of roll up into him, not on purpose. He kind of got blocked there himself. Watch Harrison blocking on Cam Hart. Great block. And then a missed tackle by Xavier Watts, and that rolled into the legs, the back of the legs of Marvin Harrison, Jr. Another missed tackle by this Notre Dame defense. And you sure hope it's nothing serious with Marvin Harrison Jr. He did a great job on the play, blocking on the perimeter. They are tending to Harrison on the field after the long touchdown. We'll check on him when we come back. Moments ago, Marvin Harrison Jr. being helped off the field by the Ohio State athletic staff. And at first putting no weight on that rolled up ankle, eventually started to get a little bit of weight on as he made his way towards the medical tent. And we'll keep eyes out. We've got Ahmed Fareed down on the Ohio State sideline. Meanwhile, it was an outstanding run for Travion Henderson to get Ohio State a little bit of breathing room. And now Jaden Felding's extra point is good. Yeah, right after the turnover on fourth down, Ohio State hits him with a counter, executed perfectly. Matthew Jones, the right guard, Josh Fryer, the right tackle. You got a kick out and a lead through. And normally, this ball should hit right in here. But when you have speed like Travion Henderson, he knows he can get this thing all the way to the outside. He bounces it out, picks up the block from Harrison. One missed tackle, and it's to the house for Travion Henderson. And that's the threat he possesses and poses every time he touches the football. I mean, he is a home run hitter, and he bounced that thing out, used his speed, and got the first touchdown of the ball game for Ohio State. Came in with four touchdowns on the season through the first three games. Has been their bell cow in an incredibly talented running back room. And Henderson showing off, just extending that total touchdown tally. Also the longest rush of the season for Ohio State, who had 63 rushing yards in the first half. And on one play in the second half, goes 61 of the house. Send it away. And another touchback. Let's go down to Ahmed Farid for an update. 
Well, no, not a whole lot right now. He's been in the tent for about two and a half minutes. Some uh, concerned teammates looking over into the direction of the tent right now, just specifically one of his teammates, Mitchell Melton, just kind of a, has his eyes glued on awaiting the, uh, the exit by Marvin Harrison. But uh, we'll keep you updated. But uh, no word yet as to the severity of the injury. Yeah, it's kind of a, a tough moment for them, right? They just took the lead. They just had one of their teammates have a great touchdown run, but another one of their teammates, maybe the best player in college football, being attended to in the tent right now. Uncertainty about his status. Now can Notre Dame respond? Down 10-0. Merriweather in motion. And the first down handoff goes to Darian Price. A nice tackle right there by Michael Hall Jr. We talked about him. He's not the biggest interior defensive line, but, but he is extremely quick off the ball. Good first step. He uses his quickness. Can be very disruptive in the run and the pass game. Normally you don't see interior defensive linemen with four or five sacks, but that's kind of what he does. But he's just as disruptive in the run game because of his quickness. And has worked to become a more vocal leader now in his junior season. And off, love, love across the 40 and a first down. Love has had a productive day as he gained 16 on the ground. Well, it's only 10 points, so you don't have to abandon the run. You can stick to what you do. You got two backs in, another nice lead block in there by Devin Ford, number 22. And love looking at protecting that football. Young back protecting that football with both arms going through the through the meat grinder right there. Price back in there. Then Merriweather out wide. And back in motion. Now Hartman to the air. Hartman feeling the pressure just dirts it in the direction of Price as Tyleek Williams applied some major pressure. Well, this is just good coverage, all right? They only rushed four, and Sam Hartman had to hold the ball a long time. Here's Tyleek. He's going to come on an outside stunt. But there's enough time to throw the football if somebody's open. No one was open, and Hartman ended up having to unload it. So good coverage and enough pressure by the four-man rush. And if you can create quarterback pressure by only rushing four, that gives you a whole lot of things you can do in the back end with coverage to take away receiving threats. This is where you expect that presence of Sam Hartman. It's what they've talked about within the Notre Dame facility. Handoff. And a nice gain on the outside to Darian Price across midfield into Ohio State territory and spilled out across the 40. Well, nice run by Price, but also take a look at the block by Jaden Thomas on the outside. You get the block by the tight end, Mitchell Evans, and there's Jaden Thomas, 83. And he was a little shaken up at the end of that play. He was blocking on Denzel Burke, but that was a key block in springing this run. Here he is working on Burke. Turns into a blocker, and the running back goes right by him. And the 10 immediately up as both Thomas and Price got off the field in a hurry, both seemingly not 100%. Again, that, that calming presence of Sam Hartman. That's what we heard through everybody in the meetings, both players and coaches that we talked to. It's just that he's even keeled no matter the situation. Well, and if, and if he's calm, the rest of the guys around him will be calm, right? And so it just rubs off on the rest of his team. It's, it's a 10-point game. There's lots of football left. They need a drive here to get some points on the board. Love. Just so quick to get through the line of scrimmage. Picks up three as Chambers and Williams combine on the stop. A nice power play. This is a power run. They pull the backside guard. Nice block by Pat Coogan, the left guard. Watch Coogan right here kind of pull and lead up through here. This is blue collar, hard nose football. I mean, <laughs> we talked about winning the game in the trenches, right? The line of scrimmage. Who can run? Who can stop the run? Who can protect the quarterback? Who can affect the quarterback? And yeah, that's a great sight to see Marvin Harrison Jr. out of the tent and on his feet. Take it to one side, pitch it to the other. Love looking to set up his blockers and can't escape. It'll be third down and medium as we go down to Ahmed. All right, so Noah, yeah, you mentioned it. Some good news. Marvin Harrison is out of the tent, seven minutes inside of the tent, and now he has retaped that right ankle. He's testing it out. He's running back and forth on the sideline right now. They're going to see 
how this goes and possibly get him back into this game. Noah. Outstanding news. Appreciate you for keeping tabs on it, Ahmed. Well, and you remember the last time we saw him go out of a football game, it was in the late third quarter of the semifinal game against Georgia. Ohio State was up by 11, and he was unstoppable. And the game turned when he had to leave the game. Eventually, Ohio State would fall by one point, just short of the college football playoff final. Just before the play clock, Hartman, and another completion. This one goes to the freshman, Rico Flores, and it's going to be enough for the first down. Yeah, Flores did a nice job, I mean, as a freshman, knowing what he needed for the first down. They have two very good-looking young freshmen. Flores gets it and doesn't try to dance. He knows he's got to get one more yard after the catch. He splits the defenders and gets forward for the first down. Flores, one of those two freshmen. The other one, Jane Greathouse, has yet to catch a ball today. Came in with three touchdowns in the early going this season. LeBron Payne, the running back now on first down. Not a whole lot of estimate on this drive. Payne. Big hole up the middle, and he's propelled forward by JT Tuimoloau. Oh, this is great blocking again. Left side. You've got... The left tackle and the left guard that's just going right at the heart of this Ohio State defense. And the back goes right between those blocks. You got the tight end getting to the next level. Mitchell Evans, number 88. And Notre Dame just trying with their offensive line, trying to impose their will a little bit here on this drive, trying to get on the scoreboard. Knocking on the door of that red zone once again. And if you run like that, and now there's only one deep safety, you give yourself man-to-man -man situations to throw the football if you want to go play action. They will run it with Payne. Sets up the blockers, and it's spun down just shy of the 20. Davison Igbenosin comes from the secondary and makes another big play. And i got to believe that Marcus Freeman and Jared Parker are thinking four down territory here your field goal kicker already missed one earlier he's got a great leg and you want points but if you can get this down to fourth and one again I would imagine that they're going to go for it. fourth and two or three maybe not tenth play of the drive Payne puts the nose down and it looks like he's got it. What a tough run. I mean, this is a hard nose run by Javron Payne. He's just going to take it right up in here. He knows he's going to get smacked in there. Nice cutoff block by the tight end, Mitchell Evans. He cuts off Jack Sawyer from the backside. And Payne just takes that in there. Again, running between the left tackle and the left guard. For a big first down. Are they going to take a look at the measurement? You'd have to imagine they will. The yep. ruling of the field on the first down is under further review. So for the moment, Jabron Payne has the first down. It's why the coaching staff loves him. He does all the dirty work, and we'll see if it'll stand as we step aside. Notre Dame driving late. Ruling of a first down for Notre Dame stands. Let's bring in Terry McCauley and take us through it. Yeah, no, he's got to get to the 18. The rear end is the first thing that touches, but but our, our camera angle is an angle, so it's going to push the ball forward a little bit. Uh, so it's just not indisputable that he was short. They have to leave it where, where it was. So the call on the field ends up being consequential. And this drive now, spanning over six minutes, continues inside the red zone. Uh, 51 yards rushing on this drive. Only 50 in the whole first half for Notre Dame. Price has the pill up the gut and just shy of the 15, dumped down at the 16. Methodical, slowly but surely for an explosive offense that has scored yep. 40 or more in five straight games. Well, they're doing it in a different way. You know, on this drive right here, they just have only got one explosive pass the entire game, a 25-yarder in the first half. They've got five explosive runs of 10 yards or more, but not the big pass play. But they're in good position to score points on this drive. Price stays in there in second and eight. Hartman over the middle. It's caught. First down and more. And Merriweather is down to the one. Expected to take a huge leap as a sophomore. Had a massive catch last week. And here's a big conversion Here down near the goal line. Here's Merriweather. Watch him just find the soft spot in the defense. It's a zone defense. They dropped the defensive end. He found the nice seam. And Hartman put the football right on him. 
and got inside the one yard line. I got to believe it's Audric Estime time right now, right? Estime not in there. Instead, it's oh, Deron Payne. Wildcat. Wildcat with Deron Payne. Sam Hartman is out here. Hartman's out here. Payne will take the snap on first and goal. Direct snap. Payne up the middle. Stopped initially, but kept fighting for the touchdown. Jabron Payne, no helmet, no problem. Initially stopped when we've already talked about Jabron Payne. He does a little bit of everything. Watch him here, just second effort. Keeps the legs moving, keeps driving. Also gets a block by the guard, Pat Coogan, pushing his man that opened up a little bit of a crease for Payne to fight through there. Ball gets over the plane, and a touchdown for Notre Dame. You can feel a collective sigh of relief at Notre Dame Stadium. This offense breaks the seal, and has a chance to get this back to within three. Trader on for the extra point. And did they throw a single pass on that drive or not? They did, but not very many. <laughs> it didn't feel like it, did it? Oh, yeah, they did. They got inside the one with the big completion. Trader the extra point. It was 10 rushes and three passes, and it all leads to that man, Mr. Do Everything, Jabron Payne, all the dirty work through the drive. It's only right that he gets rewarded with a score, and he gets Notre Dame on the board at home. Notre Dame football is brought to you by Allstate. You're in good hands. By the Xfinity 10G Network, made for streaming live sports. And by Genesis. Striking design, intuitive technology. Lux is in the details. Earlier tonight, they honored Lou Holtz and the 1988 National Championship team, the last national title team that Notre Dame had. One of their 11 national yeah. titles and Holtz in the building got quite the ovation when he came out to help greet his team. Meanwhile Marvin Harrison looks like he is up and jumping up and down so great news great generally a good thing. Yep. Meanwhile great response for Notre Dame to get on the board to bring this back to a one score game as Schrader sends it away and Johnson will field it just inside the five Johnson. Patient around the outside, finds a seam and dumped down at the 35. Let's go down to Ahmed Farid. Yeah, no, we saw him getting those sprints in on the sideline right after that. He walked back over, sat right down with the starters, talked to Brian Hartline for a second, who gave him a slap on the knee. Now he's jumping up and down, testing out that ankle. It appears he's good to go. He's get back in this game. He is one tough dude. Yeah. And when you're the son of Marvin Harrison Sr., that generally is what happens. You build a toughness and you build an affinity for football. Yeah. So we see how heavily that ankle is wrapped up, and we'll see if Harrison still has the same level of explosiveness. We saw that level from Travion Henderson, who had the 61-yard touchdown on the last drive. McCord right to Harrison right away, and a completion for a pickup of seven. And if McCord throws this on the other side of Marvin Harrison Jr., he might run for more yards after the catch. It's thrown a little bit behind him, a little slant route. He gets separation right now from Thomas Harper but has to stop and reach back to make the catch. Time of possession doesn't quite tell the entire story. Notre Dame with a couple of long drives, but the one play that Ohio State had run was the long touchdown by Henderson, who stays in there on second down and four. Got the football, Henderson dances, and just gets back to the line of scrimmage. Riley Mills, who's been relatively quiet so far today, with the stop to bring up third down. This Notre Dame defensive front does a lot of stunting and moving. That time Mills started on one side of the ball and worked back to the other side for the big stop. Henderson out wide, third and four. Leah foul on the blitz. McCord feeling it. McCord has to get rid of it. Tipped up in the air. Oh, it's complete. Oh, Kane goodness. Stover. He's still going. And they're going to blow this dead. Stover came down with a football. And we'll see where they roll it. After the catch, his knee was down. A 
at the 45 yard line. Well, they brought both inside backers, Leah Fowl and Bertrand. And Kyle McCord has got to unload it. And the ball kind of flutters out of his hands. I think Bertrand hit his arm. It flutters up in the air, bounces around. And Kate Stover somehow is able to come up with the football. I think his knee was down when he caught the football. 100%. But a heads up play by the tight end nonetheless. And that looked for sure like it was going to be a stop by this Notre Dame defense. Says he models his game after George Kittle, a man who can do a little bit of everything. And that was the concentration of Kittle right there. McCord, there's a chunk gain again to Abuka in a Notre Dame territory to the 41. Yeah, he had a deep crossing route between Abuka and Marvin Harrison Jr. And either one of those guys would have been open. See the separation from Harper. And a nice throw by McCord. He had his choice of either one of those two outstanding receivers. And that was the 100th reception of the career of Emeka Abuka. First set of downs. Abuka in motion. Play action for McCord. McCord going for it all. Single coverage. And Harrison can't reel it in. Cam Hart was with him stride for stride. Yeah, and you just wonder if that ankle has slowed him down just a hair because he's got top end speed. Cam Hart gets away with a little tug on the jersey. Cam Hart has no idea where the ball is. He's just trying to hang on for dear life, reading the eyes of Marvin Harrison Jr. And the ball just a little past the outstretched hand. But now Ohio State's starting to dial up a little more aggression on the offensive end. Another pass on first down and 10. And we'll see what they do here on second down with Trainum in the backfield. They clock down to five. Just get it off in time. Train him on the run. That's upfield, and he stopped immediately. Blown up. A nice job by this Notre Dame front, and Joshua Burnham gets to the running back in a hurry. Yeah, just chase it from the backside. He just takes it a good course down the line, and Train him tries to bend that thing back, and nowhere to go. Big third down play here for both sides. Last third down, Notre Dame elected to go with pressure. This looks like they're going to drop into coverage. 39. McCord steps up and delivers. It's a Buka again for a first down. Flag does come down in the backfield, and we'll wait for the call. Well, I think we're going to be a personal foul on the right tackle, Josh Fryer, at the end of the play. We await the word from Larry Smith. He's blocking on his old During teammate, play, John Baptiste. Foul. Take All a look at the top. Seventy unnecessary roughness. This penalty, since it was during the play, will be enforced from the previous spot. Fifteen yards. It will still be third down. There's the play. Those were two former teammates at Ohio State. No, it wasn't. Sorry, he was working on Jalen Sneed. Good route by Abuka. All for not, and because that was not a dead ball penalty, but an in the action of the play, it wipes out the catch, it wipes out the first down, and now it's third and a mile for Kyle McCord in the offense. That was a costly, costly penalty by Josh Fryer. Detrimental, and it gives Notre Dame a golden opportunity on third and 24. Winding down in this third quarter. McCord to the air. McCord lets it fly. Stover, and he's not going to get close. Ramon Henderson makes the tackle, and that will end this third quarter in a hard-fought top this ten battle. This is the end of the third. Both teams get their first touchdown of the day in the third, and now Notre Dame will get the football back to start the fourth and a chance to potentially get out in front for the first time. Earlier today, Notre Dame fans enjoyed a cold beer in the Bud Light backyard. Grab yours and get ready for more Ohio State Notre Dame action. Bud Light, easy to drink, easy to enjoy. And aerial coverage tonight is brought to you by Ford. What an atmosphere it's been at Notre Dame Stadium. Exactly what you'd expect when you get two historic programs and two top ten teams 
going and doing battle on the field. And we've got a three-point game as we head into the fourth quarter. You really can't get much better than this. No, and it just kind of feels like there's no margin for error in the game, right? There's not been a turnover yet. There's only been four penalties, but the one we just saw, the most costly penalty of the game by Josh Fryer, wiped out a key third down completion by Kyle McCord, put him in third and long. Now they got to punt the football. Yeah, in all likelihood, it's going to be Notre Dame getting the football to start this fourth quarter. And Sam Hartman, this is where it feels like you went out and got your quarterback, That's use right. the experience. Yeah, I mean, that's why you brought him in here, to be in a position to try to win a game like this in the fourth quarter. Well, they will punt it away. And, oh, what a bounce. And what coverage on special teams. Ohio State pins Notre Dame deep inside the five. All right, time now for the Walmart look plus from above. It was the Notre Dame run game. Only 50 yards rushing in the first half. In the third quarter, they said, you know what? We got to get a little tougher. We're going to run the football. They threw it three times in a drive, but most of the damage was done on the ground. They used a multitude of guys. And finally, at the end, it was Jabron Payne paying it off with the Notre Dame touchdown. And it's a one-score game. You know, Todd, you asked Notre Dame defensive coordinator Al Golden about what he learned from the NFL, his time in the yeah. NFL, both with the Detroit Lions and Cincinnati Bengals. He said he learned that most games aren't decided until the final four minutes, and it certainly feels like we're in for a fantastic finish tonight. Great house in motion. They give it to him on that jet sweep, and he will pick up three. Great house hasn't been involved as much as we expected him yeah. to be. Coaches were really looking forward to him having a big game in his first big moment as a freshman. Now, how does Marcus Freeman coach this game a little bit differently than he did in his first regular season game as a head coach last year against Ohio State? Well, we already talked about, you know, he doesn't want to play not to lose. He wants to play to win, and he's got a savvy veteran quarterback that he trusts. Hartman looking around, lofts it. Great house is right there for a big game. Cuts it back and is devoured at the 35. Igbenosin and Proctor combine on the tackle, but Hartman finally goes for 28 to the freshman. This fooled the Ohio State defense. This was, it was a fake wide receiver screen both ways, and then the middle opened wide up. Ohio State went to both sides to defend the screen, and nobody accounted for Greathouse in the middle of the field. Perfectly designed play to get out from their own end zone. Put a man in motion. And the crowd not happy that is the substitution rule that Ohio State's allowed to match the substitution from Notre Dame. Hand it off. Estime, who's been incredibly quiet in this second half, and again gets bottled up at the line of scrimmage. Well, and there's no room to dance. You know, you just have to hit it fast and hit it hard. And if you can only get three yards, you only get three yards. But this is a rugged Ohio State defense. Tommy Eichenberg, the leading tackler, is going to be there along with JT. And a very short game for Estime. Who is normally outstanding in the fourth quarter. Nearly 10 yards per carry this season. Let's we'll see if he has that heroic ability once again at home. Second and 10 for Hartman. Dials it up. Rainbow delivery. Incomplete. It was single coverage, Flores and Ingamosin. And the crowd looking for a flag they won't get. No, good coverage by Ingamosin. He's got length. He's 6'2", 190 pounds. The ball's a little underthrown. And that's why Ingamosin was able to kind of get there. Take a look at it again. Ooh. Well, it's close. You mentioned that that ball was underthrown. That generally yeah. does play a role in the decision for a pass interference or not. And it looks like the officials didn't see enough to get the laundry on the field. So it's third down and ten. Hartman. The liver. Complete. Another spectacular grab from Evans. Four-man rush. Solid protection. Evans out in the slot gets right behind the linebacker, Cody Simon, and a perfectly thrown ball by Sam Hartman. In between three white jerseys, he drops a dime. As a freshman, Sam Hartman, who earned the starting job at Wake Forest, played against Notre Dame. Yeah, I did said, that game. He said that first snap, he went out there and realized 
I'm not ready for this. Moment's too big. <laughs> but right now he's proving all that experience is coming in incredible handy. Hand it off. Up the gut. That's what Estime has to do. He has to run it just like that. No dancing, no bouncing. Just get those shoulders square and power forward for as much as you can get. Nice lead block in there by David Davis Sherwood, number 38. He's a backup tight end, lined up as a fullback. And that's good hard nose running by Estime. Evans in motion again. He has had himself a day. Six catches, 70 yards. Right back to the ground. Estime keeps fighting, and he's going to get the first down. Ty Hamilton stops him in his tracks. But now Notre Dame, the offense continues to hum, and all Kyle McCord can do is watch. These two teams, this is a season where it feels like that national title relevance and competitiveness is up for grabs. Both these teams feel like they should be in the conversation, and this fourth quarter will go a long way in deciding it. Hartman on courts, down the sideline, flag is down. Merriweather, the intended target, Igbenosin once again in coverage. Yeah, and this time they're going to get Igbenosin, I think, with the pass interference. Had hands on him. Prior to the pass, holding, defense number one. Junior penalty for the previous spot, automatic first down. The last one, there was no call, and probably rightfully so, and this time he had them all in a bear hug running down the field, and a first down for Notre Dame. These two coaches, they both said that while you don't want to exactly acknowledge that this is a different game than the other ones, you have to at least say this one feels different. While the preparation stays the same, right. there's a little bit of extra emotion, a little bit of extra reps that go into this one, and this is where it pays off in the fourth quarter. Jeremiah loved the running back on first down. Play clock down to one. They weren't going to get that off. I think Marcus called a timeout. Sam Hartman, as, as many starts Prior as he's had, was not aware clock. of the play clock right timeout. there. Notre Dame, it's the first of the half, will be 30 seconds in late. You know, is it's interesting. It's a low-scoring game, right, 10 to 7. But it's been a very clean game. You know, no turnovers, very few penalties. Uh, not a lot of mental errors or mental mistakes. It's just been a hard-fought physical football game being determined right now at the line of scrimmage. Marcus Freeman mentioned that a lot of the way that Notre Dame has played early this season, if they had played that way last year, they would have lost the game. And this year, they've won the games by 20 points. Yeah. This is a different situation. You won a national championship as a quarterback, and you had to play in a lot of close games that season. What is the message you're continuing to give to your team just to keep them engaged? Well, the message is, hey, whatever it takes to win, we're going to do. It's complimentary football. Our defense is playing great, all right? We have to complement with that offense, and when we get opportunities to make a play, we got to make a play. Ford and Love both in the backfield. Hand it off to Love. And another burst across the 15 for the freshman. This two-back set has been effective. And I'll tell you what, these backs blocking for each other. Watch Devin Ford, number 22, stick his nose right up in there. Steel Chambers meets him in the hole. But that's good for about a seven-yard gain thanks to the lead block by Devin Ford. And that's just, again, a willingness to block and to put your face on a guy like that in the hole at the point of attack. 47 yards for Jeremiah Love, second down and four. Flores in motion. Right back to Love. And he wiggles through across the 10. Pyle continues to move inside the 5. And it's first and goal. Well, Ohio State took a risk there. They tried to bring pressure. The problem was they brought pressure opposite side of the run. They brought pressure here, and the run bounces out this way, and there's not enough defenders there. And it's a well-timed call and an easy first down running away from the pressure. Notre Dame has yet to lead today. They fell down 3-0 at the end of the second quarter. 
They were down 10 nothing midway through the third. But this half, they have controlled the time of possession and looking to go in and take their first lead of the night. Estime continues to fight down to the two. Well, the other thing you're doing here, and obviously you, you, you want to score and take the lead, but you're letting your defense rest and you're putting a little bit more stress on Ohio State and Kyle McCord in his first big start on the road because you're limiting maybe the number of opportunities Ohio State will have offensively between now and the end of the football game. This is a drive that started at the Notre Dame four yard line after a sensational punt from Ohio State. 11th play of the drive to Dorian Price, the running back, on second and goal. Hartman going to the air. Looking end zone, wide open, touchdown Irish, Rico Flores. It was a bunch formation. What a beautiful concept for the touchdown. You're going to have two receivers going to stop right on the goal line, and Flores is going to go to the back of the end zone and get the catch. He gets separation from Igbenosin. The two short receivers hold the coverage and a perfect throw. You quarterback, you're taught to throw that high to the back of the end zone. Either your guy gets it or nobody gets it. Perfect execution for the touchdown. And you see the celebration on the sideline. That's the first career touchdown for Rico Flores. And what a moment for him to do it. Schrader for the extra point. 14-10. 14 unanswered for the Irish. Flores has made plays all night and leave it to the sixth year senior to find the, the true freshman in the back of the end zone to take the first lead for the Irish. With Discover, every fan earns cash back on their game day purchases. Discover, the official card of the Big Ten. Notre Dame Stadium rocking, and that man has galvanized this fan base even more than they generally are. Comes in after incredible success at Wake Forest and has just delivered time and time again in the early going this season. Now it goes to the inexperienced quarterback on the other side and Kyle McCord, and we'll see if Ohio State can respond with another successful drive. Trader will set it deep for Notre Dame. Xavier Johnson back to receive it for Ohio State and will let it sail into the end zone for another touchback. Now time for our Jersey Mikes above the rest. It's the Notre Dame offensive line. We talked about this game being decided in the trenches. Who would be able to run the football and who would stop the run? In the first half, neither team did much. Ohio State had the one long run, but here in the second half, Notre Dame 114 yards on the ground and they have just been challenging this Ohio State defense going right at him, and the offensive line has kept the pocket clean for Hartman and made room to run the football. Now what does Ohio State's offense need to do? Ohio State's offense needs to, to, to put a drive together too, right? They, I think they still need to throw on early downs because that's the easiest down to get completions for Kyle McCord. Takes the handoff to Abuka. McCord on the bootleg. Just a little push pass. It goes to Julian Fleming. And a great play by Benjamin Morrison as he finds him, undercuts him for barely a gain of one. Yeah, it's a bootleg trying to get McCord out. And a quick little completion to Fleming who's coming underneath the formation. And a really nice play by Morrison who was in man coverage on Fleming. That's why he was so close to make that play after the catch. You can feel the energy at Notre Dame Stadium. McCord to throw on second down. Good protection runs out. And another completion, a tough catch made as Jean-Baptiste was in pursuit on McCord. Stover somehow brings it in, and it brings up third down. Marvin Harrison Jr. in the backside, a lot of bodies just around him, nowhere to go. And a really nice job by McCord is extending the play under duress and getting the catch. Third and five. Will they bracket Marvin Harrison again on this third down play? You got Egbuka down on the, the right side. Here's him. Marvin's up top.
McCord over the middle, wide open. Xavier Johnson with a lot of space. Will in the Notre Dame territory. Cam Hart tracks him down. What a play by the captain grad student for Ohio State to the tune of 40 yards. This is a mistake because this is Morrison coming on a blitz and nobody picks up the middle of the field receiver. Xavier Johnson is right there, an easy read for Kyle McCord, but nobody in coverage behind that blitz and Notre Dame got burned by busting a coverage. Nice read by Kyle McCord. And now knocking on the door a field goal range, although that doesn't do you a whole lot of good here. Pitch it, but no, this play is going to be whistled dead with a flag coming in. Yeah, a little movement early. They were pulling linemen to the right and running the ball to the left. Ball start, offense, number 71. Five-yard penalty, first down. Josh Simmons, the transfer from San Diego State. Just a little quick out of his stance. He had dealt with penalties quite a bit coming into this game. 19 penalties committed since the start of last year. It is the most in the country among tackles. Backs him up. First and 15. Just get it off in time from McCord. Lost one towards the sideline. Henderson with separation, and the flag's going to come in. Yeah, that was J.D. Bertrand who was in coverage and really had no idea where the ball was and ran into the intended receiver. See, he's out Defense there guarding the running back. 15-yard penalty from the previous And five. the speed Automatic. of Henderson First gets down. by him. And then he ends up just kind of running into him because he's beat on the play, and he doesn't know where the football is. That's a hard matchup for Bertrand because of the speed of Henderson. Man coverage out in space against a heck of an athlete. Marcus Freeman, Al Golden defensive coordinator. So glad to have J.D. Bertrand back this week after he missed last week with a concussion. The captain, the quarterback of that defense, but a mental error there. And now Ohio State in the red zone. Play action pass from McCord. McCord with plenty of time and finally runs out. He just lost it towards the end zone, back to the end zone, and incomplete. A good coverage downfield. McCord tried to extend the play as long as he could and then just let it fly out of the back of the end zone. It's kind of max protection. He got tight ends in, backs in, and nobody open. And McCord does the right thing, just sailing it out of the back of the end zone. Live to play another down. You know, don't make a mistake. Again, it just feels like there's no margin for error for either team in this game right now. And it's what the staff has valued from Kyle McCord. Consistency and taking care of the football. Second and ten. Henderson finds the hole. Henderson breaks a tackle, and he gets tripped up just shy of the first down. Picks up nine. You know, the only thing, both defenses have played very well and made their plays. But Notre Dame still has had too many missed tackles. Please reset the game clock. And they're lucky that Henderson lost his balance because he would have walked into the end zone. It was another missed tackle. The play clock needs to be at 40. We had a defensive helmet come off. They will both start on my signal. And we get the reset after the helmet comes off. And a full play clock to work with now for Ohio State. Here's a test for that Notre Dame red zone defense. Third and short has been a problem for Ohio State. Henderson, the handoff. Oh, not sure he got it. Javante Jean-Baptiste, the first one to him, and he's short. Yeah, they're only converting like 44% so far on third and four or less. Here's third and one. And he doesn't get it. Fourth down and less than one now for the Buckeyes. Ohio State 0 for 1 on fourth down tonight. Chip Trainum will come in at the running back. Fourth and less than a yard. Are they even going to snap it? Ryan Day's going to call timeout. Right now they're just trying to get a jump off sides. And Ryan Day says, let's call timeout and get the play that we want here on fourth and one. 
second and a half. We 30 seconds in length. But that's key because you heard it second of the half. Yep. And now that means Ohio State's. No, I, I believe that was the first of the half, right? He said second of the yeah, half. I think it was right. the first. Notre Dame had called a timeout earlier in this second half as well. So now both teams with two timeouts with 4.17 yep. remaining. This is obviously a critical play on both sides, but it's not the end of the world. Certainly, if Ohio State doesn't get it, they can go back to the defensive side where they've had some big-time stands. But right. if you're Ryan Day, the play caller for the Buckeyes, where are you going here? Well, I think you're going to power run it. I mean, you could go quarterback Correction. sneak because it's Alabama less than one yard. First time out of the half. They have two remaining. I mean, you're less than one yard. You could go quarterback sneak with a push from behind. Or you give it to, you know, train him as your big back, right? Your speed back is Henderson. Mayan Williams, we've not seen much of him. Train him's the 233 pound back. I think it's quarterback sneak or it's give it to train him. Your two guards are your best offensive linemen. I think you squeeze in behind them. Play clock all the way down to five. McCord handed off a Puka around the edge. He is stonewalled. Notre Dame gets the stop and they get the football back. Ryan Day, fourth and less than one, anticipating that Notre Dame would stuff up the inside, decides to go end around. They ran this jet sweep earlier for a nice game, but on fourth and one, Notre Dame defends it beautifully. Jack Kaiser and D.J. Brown watch 24 and two, string it out and stop the ball carrier short. A beautiful defensive play on fourth down. And now Hartman back to work for Notre Dame with the advantage. Hartman rolls and finds an open receiver. Rico Flores for a first down. See, just no panic in Sam Hartman, right? I mean, that play took a long time. But there was not enough pressure for him to do anything. He just kind of moved and moved and moved, bought time, and then got to completion. Again, his coolness, his composure, and his calmness, I think, has been even more valuable to this team than his talent. And right now, in the final four minutes of the football game with a lead, that's what you want more than anything. His presence in the huddle and at the line of scrimmage. And his decision-making with the football in his hands. Ohio State only the two timeouts. Play clock all the way down under five. Estimate. Estimate a big hole. And it continues to drag tacklers for a first down. Well, again, 125 yards rushing in the second half. Now for this Notre Dame offense, it's just power football. Going right at him. Blake Fisher, the right tackle, number 54. Big time block on that play. And just running right at the heart of this Ohio State defense. And it's a good defense. It's played well. But Notre Dame just challenging them at the line of scrimmage and winning. Todd, Notre Dame has dominated the ball in this second half. Yeah. 34 plays for the Irish, 15 for the Buckeyes. Uh, most of that is because they're running. You know, there's not incomplete passes. They're running the football and making first downs. Hartman's going to keep. Probably the wrong decision. Spun down by Tui Molalau. Well, that's the kind of play Ohio State needed. A negative yard each play because Notre Dame has been ahead of the blocks. Time the out. sticks. Iowa State. Ohio State calls their second timeout. We'll step aside. It's been a quiet night so far for JT Tuimolowal, but this play he blows up. And Sam Hartman decides to keep the football. They were trying to go with that fake to one back, give to the other. They've had success with that, but not that time because JT was in the backfield, and Sam Hartman decided not to try to make the handoff. Ohio State can only stop it one more time. They're going to go to the air with Hartman. And oh, it was nearly picked off. We saw Tui Molo do that time and time again against Penn State a year ago. Yep. Back-to-back -back plays. He's been pretty quiet. Here he is. He's going to read the screen and get out in the throw lane. 
And that was so close. Would have been the first interception of the season for Sam Hartman. Again. And now third and 15. Yeah, you got to be smart here if you're Sam Hartman, right? Complimentary football. You've got a four-point lead. We're getting down towards two minutes. Don't get greedy on this third and long. And they'll run it with Payne. Dances across the 30 and to the 32. Proctor makes contact. And will Ohio State looks like they'll save the timeout. So they will get the football back with under two minutes to play. Clock will stop on those first downs, and they've got the one timeout yep. to work with. And if you're Notre Dame, you want to let this clock go down as far as you can. And then try to flip the field with the punt here. Jerry's call. Ohio State number 16. Let's change to number four. Flip it back and forth. And that number four. Lorenzo Styles back to his normal number. Meanwhile, flag is down, and they'll just back it up on the delay of game. Now, remember this. Ball start. Kicking team, number 27. Five-yard penalty. Take a Fourth look down. at that from Bertrand on a false start. But the play clock was winding all the way down either way. You're trying to flip the field here, but remember, this is Abuka as a punt returner. And you know how dangerous he is with the ball in his hands. So you got to be very disciplined in your punt coverage here if you're Notre Dame. It is the boot from McPherson. And now Abuka with some space. Abuka waiting for some blockers and will just go down at the 35. Solid field position for Kyle McCord in the Ohio State offense looking to drive for the win when we come back. Well, Todd, you can go back and look at all the decisions the coaches made, but there are two big ones that stand out. The fourth and one call for Ohio State yeah. and the second and 15 call for Notre Dame. Yeah, they called a safe play. The screen, you don't expect it. You don't complete it. I mean, JT made a great play on it. It falls incomplete, and that stops the clock, and it allows Ohio State to save their last timeout. They'll start this drive from the 35. Henderson in motion. McCord looking to swing it to him, and that's going to be incomplete. It was tipped at the line and just barely a forward pass. I think Javante Jean-Baptiste may have got a hand on it. He's trying to make a safe play on first down. And you can see right there, Jean-Baptiste gets enough on the ball to alter the course. And it's second and ten. Coaches have tried to make sure that he stayed focused on the game and not going up against his former teammates. But whatever he's done, he has been spectacular as a record today. Second and ten. McCord, screen, over the head of Henderson. He had space, too, because they free-released him, and there was nobody picking him up. But the ball is going to be a little bit high and hard. Watch, right here. Nobody's there to pick up Henderson. It's high, and it's behind the running back, and that's why Trayvon's like, just get that ball in front of me, and I'm off to the races. And now it's third and ten. And a first-year starting quarterback, Kyle McCord, who has not been in this type of environment. McCord uncorks. It's complete. First down, Ohio State to Abuka. I mean, Abuka just has such a great feel. Watch him sit down between Harper and the safety and make the catch in space. He has had some huge... Third down conversions today. McCord hit as he throws. Incomplete in the direction of Fleming. A good pressure that time. John Baptiste in there. He's coming from the outside right here. He is. He's going to get good pressure. Collapse the pocket. Also Jalen Sneed who has been a presence in the game today. He has shown up. Got a lot of sudden burst in good position by Benjamin Morris in there to knock it away. Can McCord find a signature moment in just his fourth game as a starter? Second and ten. McCord feeling the pressure, gets rid of it for Stover in a positive game. They get out of bounds, which was the key here, pausing the clock until they get it to the line.
third and seven. Well, Buka has been the guy, it seems like, on third down. A lot of attention being paid to Marvin Harrison Jr. He's up here. Well, Buka's right here. McCord steps up, and he's hit as he throws it. Incomplete. Major pressure from Notre Dame and J.D. Bertrand, the captain. Yeah, Bertrand comes on the blitz. There's a man to pick him up. Travian Henderson just doesn't do a good enough job blocking the blitz, and Bertrand is able to get a hit on the quarterback right as he's releasing the football. Here's the ball game. And they're taking Henderson out on this fourth down play and bringing a bigger back in, train him, train him to help pass protect on fourth down. Ohio State does have the timeout. And they used it. Timeout. Notre Dame. It's their second of the half. It'll be 30 seconds in length. So it's Marcus Freeman who takes his second timeout. Kind of like the, the basketball timeout. You know, you see the formation on the last play or the out-of-bounds play. Fourth down play could be the last play of the ball game. Freeman sees they were in an empty backfield and calls timeout to make the right adjustment. I'll tell you what, Al Golden told us, you know, it's gonna come down to this, the last four minutes, and it has. I mean, this has been a great battle between two very physical football teams, and it comes down to this one play right here. We just saw Marvin Harrison Jr. On a normal day, it's a given that it's going to him. The football is heading his direction, but today, with the ankle issue, and yeah. he's just been relatively quiet overall. It's been Abuka who's been the man to step That's up. Right. I mean, you, you don't ever want to rule that guy out, right? Marvin Harrison Jr. But the pressure here the last couple of downs has also been a factor for Notre Dame and what they've been able to do in affecting Kyle McCord. Fourth in the ball game. Looks like bracket coverage on Marvin down here on the right. McCord steps up over the middle. First down, Julian Fleming with the extra extension. How about that? Julian Fleming, very quiet, crossing route, working on the nickelback Thomas Harper and gets just enough for the first down. Stover's open, nearly intercepted. Oh boy, he's so lucky. Stover was wide open. The pass was late, and D.J. Brown almost intercepted it. Watch D.J. Brown read this and come right in front of the intended receiver and not able to catch the football. Stover was open for a moment, and then D.J. Brown could have ended the game right there. Again, no margin for error all night. McCord to throw on second down. Another completion diving grab from Harrison. Working in between defenders. I mean, there's a lot of attention to him, but he makes a great catch. McCord looking towards the end zone. Oh, broken up. Benjamin Morrison locked in with Harrison. Boy, these two have battled tonight. I mean, there have been some really good one-on-one -on -one matchups. Now, there's safety help if he comes back to the inside, but it's an outside route. And so Morrison is right there one-on-one, -on -one, and he can't play it much better than that. Morrison is a freshman last year, a team high, six interceptions. 11th play of the drive. McCord. Hit. McCord keeps the football, lets it loose, and he throws it away. Great penetration again by Botello. Yeah, this shows some strength by Kyle McCord, too. I mean, he's able to get rid of this football. They're going to talk about whether it was intentional grounding, but I think there were receivers in the area. He was not out of the tackle box. It's close, and they do throw the flag here. And this will end up being intentional grounding. Intentional grounding. 
offense, number six. So lost the down on the play. Terry, are they calling that just because he was definitely trying to avoid the sack? I mean, it seemed like there were receivers in the area. Todd, he was in the tack. He was still in the tackle box. Right. He has to throw the ball in the direction of a receiver. We'll watch 18's route. He cuts inside, and then the quarterback throws it away from him. Yeah. Had 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 18 been outside the numbers, or excuse Got me, you. outside the numbers, it wouldn't have been a foul. But That's he's it. he's well away from uh, that direction. To avoid it the is intentional grounding and a good call. And you just heard it at the very end there from our referee Larry Smith. Ohio State's going to have to use that final timeout to avoid the 10-second runoff that comes from the penalty. And let's just take another look at that route. So, Terry, we're saying if he broke maybe to the outside, now they, they avoid this intentional grounding altogether. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the quarterback had also been hit, but he starts his throwing motion after contact. So it's all on him. So that contact doesn't matter. It's all on the quarterback. He's got to get it in the vicinity of a receiver. And it, again, it's the direction he threw it that made this intentional grounding. Yeah, and credit. Jordan Botello because he made the play. He got quick pressure in there. We've seen him play inside and outside. He gets the pressure and forces the throw. And the ultimately the penalty on Ohio State. This feels pretty obvious. You got two shots at the end zone here. Third and 19 from the 22. No timeouts and 15 seconds left. Yep. So you've got to take your shot. Yep. Well, you got guys to do it to, right? I mean, you've got some guys that you can take a chance with. The question is now, does Al Golden choose to continue pressure and try to get to Kyle McCord before he can find Marvin Harrison or Abuka or Kate Stover near the end zone? Three-man rush. McCord floats it, end zone, caught short. Abuka makes the catch inside the one. Yeah. Locks will pause here. They can spike it. Get on side. McCord clocks it with seven. What a throw. And again, Abuka just reading the coverage and finding the soft spot. It's a three-man rush. They're dropping eight. And he does a great job of gearing down his route at the end instead of running into the coverage. And McCord able to find it. What a big-time throw and catch at this point in the game. Henderson and Hart had to keep him outside the goal line. But now, seven seconds left. Second and goal, no timeouts. You have two throws or you have one run here. That's all you got. And Notre Dame will take their final timeout. Timeout. Notre Dame. The third and final charge timeout. Be 30 seconds in length. Well, that's the key with this Ohio State offense. Marvin Harrison Jr. might not have the best day, but Ameka Abuka is good enough to be a number one receiver yes. pretty much everywhere else in the country. And he's got... A great night, seven catches, 96 yards, and some clutch, clutch grabs yeah. for Ohio State. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, the clutch type of grabs that they've been in critical moments, and credit Kyle McCord. I mean, with a couple big-time throws here to get his team in position. 21-38, 240 yards now. And Ohio State with a chance to drive right here for the win. What a moment for this young man out of St. Joseph's High School, won the job leading into week three. Second and goal. McCord rolls, fires, incomplete. Harrison, the intended target, three seconds left and third, third down upcoming. Train him in again for Travion Henderson. If you're Notre Dame, you got to be alert for a run here as the last play of the game. Give it to him. Train him up the middle. He's in. Touchdown, Ohio State. They walk it off at Notre Dame Stadium.
They will look at it. They have to look at it. Well, first of all, gutsy call, calling the run. All the defenders on that side. Trainum runs back to the left. Notre Dame did not have enough defenders on that side of the formation. Now, did he get the ball across the plane? <laughs> I think so. It just needs to, the nose of the ball just needs to cross. That's a touchdown. Gutsy call, fourth down. They went to the run. They took Travion Henderson out. They brought the bigger back in, and Notre Dame was not in a good formation defensively to stop the run to that side. Stunned silence in South Bend. And for Trainum, came in short yardage all night and came up with the biggest play. Touchdown will be confirmed. And Ryan Day, a sigh of relief. You can feel that collective exhale yeah. in Columbus. Well, again, all the defenders were on the right side. They were playing man-to-man -man on the receivers. And it was a great call by Ryan Day. Review. The real question, you saw it, and now the fans here believe that he was short. You saw it there on the clock. Did he get it over that goal line with one second on the clock? I'm not sure if it looks short. Let's see where if the what's the first body part that touches is that knee and it looks like the football is right there even with a goal line. Yeah. Kyle McCord so much credit to that <laughs> young man for how he handled Look at that. everybody looking Tony Alford the running back coach Chip Trainum, the transfer from Arizona State came as a linebacker. May have just scored the biggest touchdown of his career. Let's hear from Terry McCauley. Uh, obviously, they're going to have to review the final play of the game, especially one that, that that's this close. But just take us through what they're looking at and kind of their process down the stretch here. No, I've been in contact with them. They have confirmed this is touchdown. What they're actually looking at is when his knee is down or when he breaks the plane, is there one second on the clock? And if there is, then we'll have a kickoff. It's awfully close, and it looks like just based on our replay right there that that is the case. Now, remember, you can call for a fair catch, but it has to be within a certain yardage designation. You'd imagine that Ohio State, if they did have to kick it off, it would be some kind of pooch. Squib yes. Or pooch, yeah. What a ball game. My goodness. After review, the ruling of a fill of a touchdown is confirmed. However, we will have one second left on the game clock we will have an untimed down and then a kickoff there you have it so they will have to kick it off after the extra point ryan day just trying to keep his team composed right now well what a drive engineered by this new starting quarterback kyle mccord Incredible throw to get them down to the one yard line to Abuka. Now, if they were to block the extra point and return it, <laughs> that's two points for Notre Dame, yes. and it could take us to overtime. Stranger things have happened. Felding will come on for it. And the kick is right through. So the seesaw gets Ohio State back in front after they had given up 14 unanswered points. You know, I want to look at the touchdown again and just show you this was a great call by Ryan Day. Switch back, and now these defenders are all on this side. There's only a couple guys over here, two guys to stop the run. And you have three blockers for Ohio State, and then Trainum takes it inside. So it was the right call at the right time. Ryan Day, a lot of people wondering about the fourth down call when he went with the jet sweep instead of inside. This was a brilliant gutsy call on fourth down to run the football on the last play of the game. So now they're going to have to hope for a miracle in South Bend. And with a packed house that has been engaged and enthralled with this sublime atmosphere. Could we end in classic and historic fashion? That's all they can hope for. Felding will send it away. 
Payne, Estime, Ford all back in the area. And we'll see what Notre Dame has up their sleeve with a second remaining. Pooch it. And let it go out of bounds. Well, that's heads up by Notre Dame not touching that football. It works in their favor. They'll get one shot. I mean, there's no way Sam Hartman can get this football anywhere near the goal line. So they've got to have some other kind of play that involves laterals or something, right? How much do you work on that type of stuff every now and then in practice? Yeah, I mean, you have those plays and you work on them. A lot of times when you work on them, you're kind of having fun and fooling around with it. But but you certainly have that play in your in your playbook or a play like that. Of course, Ohio State will put everybody packed near the goal line. Jeremiah Love will be the running back. What kind of magic does Sam Hartman have? Over the middle, Evans. Pitch it back, Merriweather. Extra one back to Hartman. He's got to have to have somebody behind him. Just gets rid of it. That's a fumble, and Ohio State jumps on it. it was likely a forward pass anyway. Igbenosen on top of it as the flag comes Illegal in. Illegal forward pass by the pass of team number one. That penalty is declined. Game is over. And that puts the nail in the coffin. Ohio State stays perfect on the season. 17-14 on Kyle McCord's heroics down the stretch. Now what a ball game. We, we felt like it was going to be this kind of a game. Hard fought, battle, street fight at the line of scrimmage. Both quarterbacks led their team on, on impressive drives at the end. And Ohio State comes in here to South Bend and gets a gritty, gritty win. Todd, I'm not saying that we're seeing what we saw out of Ohio State's offense the last couple of seasons with Justin Fields and with C.J. Stroud. But Kyle McCord goes 21 of 39 with 240 yards. He has a huge day late in this game, and it's time to hear from his head coach, who's standing by with Catherine Tapp. Yes. Watch this. Co Coach, you knew this one wasn't going to be easy, but it came down to the wire. And what can you say about the performance from your quarterback, Kyle McCord, to finish that drive? Toughness. Toughness. That's it. Physicality, cross the board, finish it off, having guts. You know, like I like to know where Lou Holtz is right now. What he said about our team, what he said about our team, I cannot believe. This is a tough team right here. We're proud to be from Ohio, and it's always been Ohio against the world. And it'll continue to be Ohio against the world. But I'll tell you what, I love those kids, and we got a tough team. What did they prove to you tonight in this victory that you'll take Toughness. away and run with? Toughness. Everybody's questioning these kids all the time. We had one bad half the last couple years. That's it. Everybody wants to question these guys. These guys are warriors right here to come back and win. This kid right here to come back in the second half and win. I'm emotional about this for a reason. A lot of people question these kids and say a lot of things about them. I love them. When someone attacks your family to come in and win like this is special. It's a great win for our program and a great win for Ohio State. Can you take us through the play call to run the ball on fourth down? What was behind the decision to do that for right, you? I'll take a deep breath now. <laughs> so when we got down there, we had <clears throat> we had no timeouts. And I felt like we had a chance to maybe, you know, sprint out to, to get Marv the ball. We wanted to get Marvin the ball. He's the best receiver in football. But then with three seconds left, we knew that was the last play. And I felt like they could have been a little bit soft inside. We got to make a yard. We had four opportunities, two down here and two down here to get first downs. We didn't do it. And we had to get it right there. We got it. We won the game. And I'm just so happy for our team. Coach, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for your patience. <laughs> <laughs> All right, KT, an emotional Ryan Day. And understandably so, after a victory like this, he'd been questioned so much in how he handles big games. Yeah. And he just said in the biggest moment, he found a way to put the ball in the right player's hands, find a way to get out in front and win this game in, in really dramatic fashion. Yeah, and, and you know what? I mean, both of these teams performed well you know and and we're going to hear more from Notre Dame down the rest of the season but for Ohio State to come in here on the road to be down with a new quarterback uh, this was an impressive win and not the kind of win we've seen Ohio State have in the last previous years this was a different style of win but impressive nonetheless on the Notre Dame side so much positive that you still can take from this defensively certainly and offensively Sam Hartman showed a lot 
And we're going to go back down to Catherine Tappin with one of the many stars for Ohio State today. Yeah, here with Kyle McCord. And Kyle, congratulations. The fourth start of your career, and it's the biggest game of your career. How did you get this one done tonight? Man, I mean, we just battled. That's all it was. I mean, it wasn't always looking great. Uh, definitely left some points on the field. We just kept battling. And, you know, all glory to God for it. You know, this team, the, the, the sky's the limit for this team, man. You know, this was a, a big step, a big milestone in our season. We just got to keep it rolling in a Big Ten play. What did you learn about yourself in this game, being able to grind it out in the second half in particular and get that ball in the end zone? Yeah, I mean, we were resilient. They're a really good team, really good defense. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, you can't draw it up any better than that with a chance to go win the game. Um, you know, two minutes left. That's all you can ask for. Defense played a great game. Um, so just a great team win. And like I said, just continue to build on it. Yeah, and follow up on that defense because they really kept you guys in this game. How much does that help you and what you're trying to achieve on offense? Yeah, I mean, it makes it makes my job a lot more easier. Um, you know, I don't have to be perfect out there. I know, you know, if we don't score every drive, we're going to be all right because our defense is going to come up with stops when it matters. And that's exactly what they did tonight, uh, especially that last drive. Uh, getting a few big incompletions, stopping the clock and getting us the ball with enough time left to go down to score because, I mean, we needed every single second of it. So, you know, you can't draw it up any better than that. Kyle, thanks so much for your time. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Noah. All right, Catherine. So for Kyle McCord, a lot to be said for the way that he handled himself. First, real legitimate, not just road environment, but hostile environment yeah. here at Notre Dame Stadium, heavily in favor of the Irish, despite being many uh, red covered fans yeah. here yeah. in attendance. But uh, just a lot to take for him. And the confidence continues to grow for a new starting quarterback. Yeah, I mean, we talked about the beginning of the game. You know, he, he took a big step forward last week against Western Kentucky. This was going to be a different challenge. He needed to play his best game of the season so far. And I think he did. And like he said, it wasn't always pretty, but it was gritty. And when they needed him to make plays and to make throws, he did. You know, and, and they did it pretty much without their best player being a factor in the game. Marvin Harrison Jr. was not a factor for the most part in this football game. So uh, very impressive win uh, by Ohio State. On the Notre Dame side, Sam Hartman battled the defense yeah. was really outstanding yeah. for pretty much this entire game even in that last drive but a lot to take from it and still a lot of football to be played yeah a lot of football to be played and i don't think either one of these teams i don't think notre dame is out of the national championship picture or the college football playoff picture quite yet big stuff from both of these teams a top 10 matchup that delivered in every facet and every possible way both teams played like champions throughout this game. It was just Ohio State who had the final word. Coming up next, except on the West Coast, it's your local news. Don't miss Big Ten action next Saturday, starting with Illinois taking on Purdue at 3.30 Eastern on Peacock. Then we'll be in Iowa as the Hawkeyes take on Michigan State. Pre-game coverage begins at 7 Eastern on NBC and Peacock. For Catherine Tappen, I'm Ed Fareed, Todd Blacklist, Terry McCauley, our entire crew. I'm Noah Eagle saying so long from South Bend. You've been watching Notre Dame football 